So I've actually brought you off the show floor a little bit, just to the side of the booth here, so I can show you through these two remote controls in a little bit more detail. So we've got the Halo here. Now, I don't actually have one, but this is a direct SR260 replacement. So the size and the button layout, there and thereabouts, is pretty much identical. And then we've got this one here, which is the Halo Touch. So the Halo Touch has less buttons, more touchscreen. So this one has a screen, and the screen can be controlled via the buttons, but it's not a touchscreen. So these are these two different models. They both come in silver and black. The black, a little bit more plasticky. The silver and this black model of the touch are made from aluminium. So let's take you through in loads more detail now, the Halo. So the Halo remote control, first thing up here that you see is the custom buttons. Now these are one of my favourite things from the SR260, because we would use these for say, lights all on, lights chill, lights all off. But that was a 1.2.3 dot. What they've actually done on the remote control now, these focus buttons, as they call them on the Halo, have text above it here. So when you can click into the text, so they just put something on for ISC here, but they're bringing out the ability to do submenus. So to be able to do things such as click into the button for your screen size. So say if you've got a masking screen in the cinema room, you can click the button, you can have 69, 235, make it for client, movie mode, film mode, and we can skip through there as well. They've kept the watch and listen buttons. So if I click the watch button here, what that's doing now is it's bringing up the watch menu. Because this isn't touch screen, we scroll through there, but if you can see that, that is responsive. And if I was wanting to watch the Apple TV, click into the Apple TV, but now the Apple TV remote, that was all very responsive, all very fast. Same with listen. If we're to come to listen menu, that will bring the album data and the metadata, so the album artwork through into here as well. So we've got favorites here on the listen. I can come through into Amazon Music. Again, it's not signed in. But the fact it even told me I needed to sign in that fast, you can see the speed. Sessions, everything, lighting. Really cool feature on the lighting on here as well. The accent lighting is the colours. So we can skip through the colours on there. So if I wanted to change the LEDs over, come up here, can adjust the brightness. Really, really nice. Love that. So the on screen control for so the red for bring the on the screen, screen display is gone we brought in a tv menu button instead so that button there is going to bring up the on-screen display going down here which to the part which you're probably going to use most that's where your finger's going to sit and what they've done they've put that little ridge on there as jacob explained of 1.5 mil so you can feel the difference we've got volume and channel buttons menu this one here is a first. We've got the microphone built into it. So we can do a voice command straight through the remote control. We've got a separate video showing that. And then we've got your standard function buttons. One final cool feature on this remote control, if you've not spotted it yet, is this. So if I press this button here, what that will actually do is it'll bring me the red, green, blue and yellow buttons up that are still used on some TV services, especially in the UK. My missus will tell you the green Green button on Sky is for next episode, so she can do that, number two, and then that menu goes away. So yeah, that is the main Halo, and that's got all those features. So let's have a look through the Halo Touch now. Now, before I actually go through the Halo Touch, I'm just gonna make it very clear, this is on beta firmware. So whereas this is shipping and ready to go, and literally so fast, so responsive, this one will be a little bit slower, because they're just ironing out the last few kinks before it goes live. But let's have a look. So instead of the watch and listen menu button's been on there, it's all part of the screen here. So I can scroll through the menu, sessions, we can change the rooms, we've got the Apple TV, we've got the watch button, we've got the listen menu. So as I come into there, we've got everything available to us. We've got the lighting options on here. Now what should be pretty cool on here is how the color wheel works. So if I come into the accent lighting on here, I can skip through the colors directly through the remote control. Adjust the brightness. And that, that is really cool, I really like that. So that's controlling individual lights, but obviously we've got the scenes on there as well, so it can trigger the lighting scenes. So probably a really important feature to mention, that is different. So before the remote used to have a room off button there, that button is actually on top there. So to do a room off, we press the button, and then we confirm with an OK, which will turn the TV off. One final feature on the top remote control is this. 
They have actually included an IR blaster for infrared TVs directly into the remote control. So for those of you who don't want to put an IR book on the TV, it is built into the remote control. So I'm so glad to finally have these available to us. These remotes are both brilliant. Personally, I'm a big SR260 fan. If you've heard me talk about Control 4 remotes, you'll not love the SR260. It is just a workhorse. And for me, this one is probably the remote I'm gonna use. That being said, the way this feels, like a stick in the hand, I don't know. All I know is I love them both.